America, here's what you need to know tonight. I'm, you know, basically a rodeo clown. If you have any kind of fear that we might be headed towards a totalitarian state, look FEMA out. trailers, FEMA prisons, FEMA camps. I want proof. If they exist, I want pictures. I lost sleep last night worrying about this story, thinking about this story. But when I see, you know, 9-11 victim family on television or whatever, I'm just like, oh, shut Well, up. yesterday we talked about debunking conspiracy theories. The only thing that I answer to is myself. And I just want to be able to look at myself in the mirror and also sleep at night. Fish washed up in Maryland. Three million fish died in California back in August of 06. Two million more fish died in North Carolina in September of 09. I love this story. Fish, a whole bunch of fish just died in a river in uh, Great Britain. And... Believe it or not, the experts over there said, well, that's because they were still uh, recovering from the giant shock to their system when so many fish died last summer. What were they recovering from? The loss of their family member? What? what, what? When you read this, you start to realize that mass fish deaths aren't all that unprecedented. Now, I haven't talked to any school children yet about the possible mass fish suicides in North Carolina, but I'm sure some reporter, maybe in that Scooby-Doo van, will report on it as soon as kids wake up from their nappy nap time on the little rugs. What about dead birds? Has that ever happened before? According to the U.S. Geological Survey, in the past three decades, there have been at least 16 events involving at least 1,000 birds that have all died at once. That's a little more than one every other year when this is happening. So why are we left with the impression that something's going on? Because I, I thought it never happened before because some faceless basement blogger says freak out. Some faceless basement blogger says freak out. And I have to go to the newspapers or to the media to find out because they have so much credibility. You know, the same newspapers that tell me many times on the same page that the economy is great, it's fantastic, and horrible panic freak out at the same time. It's called context and the truth. And that's why I want to talk to you about trust. If we don't have trust, we have nothing. Why do I feel like I'm in some movie about a divorce case or something? You have to have trust. Who do you trust? When Walter Cronkite, when Walter Cronkite was, you used to trust him, Uncle Walter. Now there isn't Uncle Walter anymore. The media isn't something that I trust, and that's a problem. One network seems to disagree with all the other networks. And the other networks seem to have their heads someplace uncomfortable. Why does this matter? Well, because where are you getting the truth? Let me go to gas prices. The national average now is at $3.07 per gallon. $3.07 per gallon. Remember that number. You, of course, heard the media incessantly reporting about the high gas prices at the pump, right? Yeah, yeah, no, me neither. Why? Why? How come? Do you remember when gas was at $3 under George W. Bush? Well, the press seemed to care about it. It was the biggest problem ever. The Heritage Foundation recently reported on this. Back in April of 2005, Bush was grilled at a press conference on his handling of the $3 gas prices. The national average at the time that he was asked this question was $2 a gallon. A year later, he was asked at another press conference this. What do you say to people who are losing patience with gas prices at $3 a gallon? And how much of a political price do you think you're paying for that right now? So at 2, they're freaking out. At 3, they ask him this. By the following year, Democrats were holding press conferences about this issue. 
Had George Bush gotten his hands around this problem when he first took office, the price would not be $3 a gallon, but $2 a gallon, or $1.80 a gallon, or $1.50 a gallon. Elect Democrats in November. If you don't like these outrageous gas prices, if you feel that the oil companies have been given a free ride by the president and the vice president, vote for Democrats who will vote for changes in our energy policy. Oh, and they brought that change, didn't they? Hillary and Cynthia McKinney were so appalled by the high gasoline prices of $3 a gallon, they called for a windfall profits tax. Maxine Waters said she wanted the government to take over oil companies and national... Uh, uh, Remember that video? In 2008, Harry Reid said gas prices were the nation's top priority. Sing it, Harry. Whether we want it or not, there's going to have to be a discussion as to fuel prices, what's going on. That's the number one issue facing America today. It's more important now than the housing market. More important than the housing market? Wow. In 2008, former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi hammered President Bush for letting gas prices rise on his watch. Here's my question. Where is everyone now? Gas is three dollars a gallon. I was on television saying it can't last long. This is not good. Where were the other people that were saying that? The experts in the industry, including former Shell CEO John Hoffmeister, who at the time was saying this then with me on my show, is now predicting $5 a gallon gasoline this time around. Eric Bowling from the Fox Business Network, who has 23 years experience in the oil industry, says $7 a gallon gas prices are coming. That's great. Hey, 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 hey. Remember... Remember one thing, will you? Something that the media just doesn't seem to see. The president